I didn't know much about discrimination. I just knew that I was with people that I liked and who were like me. And um, we got along fine. But that was a good experience for me. <clears throat> because even by being bus and going to another school, I learned something from other people that I was mixed with, you see. And I think that's a good thing. I've always felt that the more you learn about things, the more you can tolerate and understand things. Our teachers were almost all white then. In those days, if you didn't do well, you were put on the last row. And so all the blacks, blacks now, colored, that were bust, we didn't want to sit in the last row. So we kind of did our homework to keep up or to go ahead. If I had been maybe at an all colored school, I might not have had that experience. And I went to Howard University, which was also, um, uh, I won't say segregated, but it was predominantly colored. I had to work, though, because we didn't have enough money to fulfill all the things that I wanted to do. So <laughs> I worked as a maid and in, uh, the, in Washington, D.C., and I had to go in the back door. I couldn't go in the front door, even though I was working there and I was a student. I couldn't go to the theaters downtown unless I wanted to sit in the balcony. When I graduated from, from Howard, I took on a job as a court reporter in uh, New York. And the restaurants, mostly on the east side, would not take reservations from us. And so we formed a group, and what they did was to pair a black couple and a white couple to go into the same restaurant. We would go after the white couple to, to break down the, the, the segregation. Nine times out of ten, the black couple would be turned away. So I did that for about two years. In New York, it take, took that long to break down the prejudice even in, in New York. When I started working in communications, I started at a black-owned radio station. It was the first black-owned radio station north of the Mason-Dixon line. This was in the early, late 50s, early 60s. And I worked there for 10 years before I got into television in 1963 at WXYZ. This was in Detroit, Michigan. I was the first African-American weather girl. At that point, at that time in history, all of the television stations were using women to do weather. And in most of the stations, they were all blonde and blue-eyed. I did that for a while, and the program director didn't like me for some reason. I don't know why, but he said, hey, you know, you got to go. Almost at the same time, I got a call. That was the invitation that I got to come back east. And of course, I took it. I started in August of 1965. And then became the first uh, African American to do TV reporting in the country and in Philadelphia. When I came here, uh, this was still a man's world. and um, They resented me as a woman to begin with and as a black woman to second. And they felt that, okay, she, don't, she doesn't know anything. What is she doing here? But something happens to most people when they're challenged when they say when you say you can't do that you're uh you enter it, something happens <laughs> you know it's not boiling your blood starts boiling uh, i've got to beat this thing and i think that's what happened to me and i survived all of that this kind of thing is still going on you know it hadn't stopped and i'm more aware and more conscious of these things today than i was then what hasn't changed, and, and unfortunately, I think, has been a, a, a regression of tolerance of people and who they are and what you do. And there's been a, an explosion of hatred that I don't recognize and don't accept uh, among people today, not just racing the racist, racist, but for gays, for immigrants, for your own children, you see. So uh, that confuses me, and it angers me, 
that we should still be fighting for the same rights and privileges.